Hey there, my name is Promise, and welcome to more Hearts of Iron 4! Yes, we're going for another achievement run today, because I didn't expect the last series to end as quickly as it did, but we were really on top of it, so we've got enough time to knock out at least one more achievement run before the next expansion for EU4 comes out, and that sucks up my time. Let's try playing with Mexico today. Now, why am I choosing Mexico? Well, I actually just got back from Paradox Con. At the time I'm recording this, I just came back yesterday, and yes, I'm horribly jet-lagged. But while I was there, had a lot of fun, got to meet some other content creators, including some Hoi4 YouTubers you might have heard of, such as, oh, I don't know, Feedback Gaming or Bittersteel, including somebody I hadn't met before named Sakuyi. Now, Sakuyi is usually a bit of a history buff, but he has been doing some Hoi4 lately, and he was telling me about the series that really got him on the map and he had a lot of fun with was Democratic Mexico. I know it sounds weird, but no matter what ideology Mexico goes with, they get access to a load of Conquest CBs that make them an absolute powerhouse in the mid-game if played correctly. And there's a unique mechanic where they can support the Spanish Civil War and farm out hundreds of army and naval XP by the end of 1938, putting them way ahead of any of their neighbors in their doctrine, which gives them a massive military advantage. It's kind of overpowered. I've done some reading, I've done some testing, and oh yeah, it works. Democratic Mexico, unironically, probably the most powerful democratic nation in the game. So, I'm totally stealing this idea, let's play with it and have some fun, and go for an achievement at the same time. The achievement I want to go for specifically is called Revenge of Montezuma, which requires that we conquer all of our lost territory when the United States won their war against Mexico many, many decades ago. So I need to basically conquer, you know, like Texas, Arizona, New Mexico, California, Utah, all of that gets added into my empire, we get the achievement. If I can also, uh, lead a faction and have nobody but uh, Central American and South American puppets or members in on that and land somewhere in Europe will get the Sunset Invasion achievement at the same time. I might get lucky with that one, I might not, but that's kind of all I'm going for. A very nice, quick, simple, easy run. Now, Mexico starts off in a really weak position. Only 22% stability and 10% war support is kind of awful. And our national spirits are not making things any better. We have Calistas over here, which are reducing my political power and construction speed. Absolutely awful. We have a weak church. I'll come back to that and explain what that means in a second. Oil concessions means that we aren't even owning our own oil production. A uh, politicized army is reducing a few things, including planning speed and uh, making uh, military leaders cost a lot more. And we have some tensions here, which are on the verge of leading toward a civil war. In fact, there are technically three separate civil wars that could fire off in Mexico. Though it's really only two, because two of them are kind of mutually exclusive. The first one down over here is the Cadillo Rebellion, and we can get rid of this uh, based on these tensions. If this tension builds up too much, it's going to fire off the Civil War. We can get rid of this by going down a political path over here. The plan of Agua Prieta, exile in Calle, and then moving over to purge the bureaucracy and arresting a general. That is going to neutralize the Civil War entirely. We have to do this at some point. An alternative would be to support the general, but this requires you start over here on the left and go down some economic focuses. That normally would be really good, but the political focuses are actually better in this case. So I'm gonna be going down this route over here. We'll worry about this in a little bit, just be aware. I'm not, I'm not really worried about the Civil War, we just have to go down this route at some point. The other Civil Wars that could fire are based around a unique mechanic for Mexico, where you have to balance out the power of the church, because the church has a lot of government influence and owns a whole lot of land. If we undermine the church and become an atheist state while our stability is low, we trigger a civil war. If we empower the church and become officially a state religion Catholic church, and we have low stability, we trigger a civil war. So you're supposed to balance that in the early game, at least until you have enough stability. We'll come back to a lot of that later, but I mean, for now, let's just keep in mind that we want to keep the church a little bit stronger and not make them, uh, not let them fall apart entirely. Let's start with that plan of Agua Prieta. I'm also going to go ahead and start building out some military factories, not civilians. I know that's weird. Trust me, it works. Let's go for some improved infantry equipment and we'll go for some electronic engineering for the research speed because I only have two slots, so we need to get as much value out of those two as possible. Then we're going to take a look at our army. Bo boost this all together, then we're going to take about half of it and we are going to delete it. 
I know, that sounds really weird. I literally am deleting my army, but it's true. Why are we doing that? Because if you go down this political route, another thing we can do, and we're gonna be beelining for this, is we are gonna start accepting refugees from the Spanish Civil War. And from that, we can choose to support either Republican Spain or Nationalist Spain by sending them guns. It doesn't cost us any political power to do this. Just every week, we can send them 250 guns and we either get 20 army experience or 25 naval experience. And I can do this as many times as I want as long as I have the guns. It's ridiculously powerful. So I wanna have a stockpile of extra guns. Getting rid of most of my units until I have about eight left seems to be roughly the sweet spot. That actually might be too many troops that we got rid of, but I wanna be around there. Let's go for a stockpile of a nice three and a half thousand guns, and let's put every new uh, military factory we produce directly into infantry equipment. And that's it. That's kind of all we can do for a little bit, except sort of just sit back and wait for some of these focuses to finish. All right, all done with that. Let's go for the exiling of Calle or Cales, or however you're supposed to say that. Actually, I don't really know totally. This gets rid of the Callistas which means our political power is about to jump back up. That's very important for us. It also gets me a really good advisor who can boost up that stability by another 15%. The threshold you want to shoot for is about 60. If you cannot get there by the time that you're at the risk of getting an atheistic state or a church state, but let's be honest, atheism is more likely, at least until you get disestablishmentarianism, you might have to do some promises of peace or improve some worker conditions, could do that. But with any luck, that's not going to be an issue. Now, here's an example where this could happen, right? We have an archbishop, right, who just passed away. So we could tell it, say, burn in hell and go directly to an atheist state and risk a civil war. I'm not doing that. We're going to go for the assertive church and just keep things balanced for now. We're not looking to rock the boat any more than we have to. All right, so the exiling is done. Now we are going to go for banning of political militias, which is going to reduce the impact of the politicized army. And most importantly, it's going to reduce the tensions from moderate down to low. This is critical for us because in order to get all the way down to the Spain's loyalists as fast as possible, we need to keep that tension low. Your alternative will be to go for the legacy of the revolution. And this is what you need to do if you want to go down a communistic route, which is helpful for another achievement where you put Trotsky in power, puppet the Soviet Union, boom, you get yourself another achievement. That is nice. It just means that we have to waste some time going for the arresting of the general a little bit earlier to avoid a civil war because you don't get to keep the tensions low, right? If we go down this route, not only do we get here faster, but that also gives us an extra 140 days of clicking the button. That's another 20 times that I can farm out some experience before I even have to worry about this, right? Now that the political militias are taken care of, we can go for the revolutionary women, which is gonna get me three more civilian factories. There's the Spanish Civil War. All right, Republican Spain, hold out as long as you can. I'm rooting for you. Seriously, the longer this goes on, the more we can click that button and get out more experience. So I would want to keep these guys going. I'd love to send them volunteers if I could, but as a non-aligned nation, that's not something we're allowed to do. All right, Revolutionary Women is done. Let's go for Soldaderas over here, which gets me a couple of military factories, which is something we know that we want. So extra ones of those is certainly going to be nice. And with 150 political power, I can afford to grab that social reformer, which gets me more democracy support and that 15% stability. Trotsky has arrived. Okay. So if you wanted to go down that communist route, this is where you would invite him to join your government, eventually making him the leader, and then you'd go for that puppeting of the Soviet Union. I was really trying to figure out if I could do a communist run and still take advantage of all this experience stuff, and it would have been kind of fun to do, but I wanted to stick with democratic. How often do you get to do a democratic run in Hoi 4 and have fun anyway, right? Soldaderas has completed. We can go for the oh, Spanish Civil War refugees. Now I'm watching this rebellion starting to get worse. I know it's scary, right? It feels like you're on a clock and you're gonna die, but no, don't worry. The way I've got this all timed out, you really can ignore this. You're not in any danger, not as of yet. Let's go ahead and support Spain's loyalists now, which means in 35 days, I'll be able to start sending all of these guns. What's my stockpile up to? About 5,000. Now that's not an absolute ton, admittedly. I would like even more than that, but it does mean that I can click the button about uh, 20 times with the stockpile I've got right now, not even taking into account any additional production efficiency I might be able to gain over time. And if I need to delete some extra troops in order to keep this going, I've got no objections with that. I wanna click that button as often as I can. 
Let's also go ahead and pick up, let's say, um, an infantry expert guy. I might as well just start passively generating some army experience on top of what I'm already about to start getting from all of these exploitable decisions. So, extra goodies are nice. Alright, we are now going to ignore all of this stuff down over here. Let's go ahead and start working on purging of the bureaucracy. That has to be the next thing we do, because this is about to kick tensions up to very high, right? We have 130 days. It's going to take me 140 to purge this person. That's a 10-day overlap before we're going to have too much tension. We don't want that. So let's go ahead and pick this up now. Can't afford to wait. Now, we see this little button right here. Support the Spanish left. We're going to click it. All right, you can see here, three convoys are sent out with 250 guns. 60% chance they succeed and we get army experience. 40% chance the convoys are sunk and we don't get them back. And instead we get 25 naval experience. So we're going to click this little button over here. And we're going to wait for exactly one little week. And we got 25 army experience just like that. Wait one more day and there it is again. And we keep clicking the button. That's it. That's it, guys. I just keep clicking the dang button again and again and again, and we're farming out all this experience. I'm up to 48. You know how hard it would be for Mexico to just get 48 experience from training their troops? It'd be super costly. This is so freaking powerful. In fact, I'm gonna go ahead and get the professional army corps up and a running. I don't think the extra 5% army experience is gonna do me any good as far as the events. It's a flat tw uh, 20 experience rate regardless. I'm pretty darn sure, but we're gonna get the land doctrine cost reduction for doing this, and before I even start buying any doctrines, I do also want to get a military theorist. So not only am I gonna farm out hundreds of army experience before um, uh, the uh, 1939, but also it's gonna be a 15% cost reduction, so it goes a bit further. If I am lucky, oh, and we just lost our first round of guns. If I am lucky though, what I would like to see happen is to get all the way down to a about mechanized offensive or maybe centralized fire control before we even have to go to war with the United States in like the end of 1939 or early 1940. That's what I'm shooting for. And you can imagine if the US doesn't have any doctrines and I'm all the way down here, that is so much more breakthrough soft attack and organization. It's gonna give me a huge advantage. You cannot understate how powerful that is. Bureaucracy is purged as of now, and we are going to go ahead and arrest the general. 70 days to go, 60 days until we get up to very high tensions, and then the whole thing just goes away. Poof! Not a problem anymore. It's, it, 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 like, who's worried? Who's worried about the Civil War? I honestly don't know why the AI keeps falling for the Civil War. It's really not that hard to avoid. Now, I do have a little bit more political power with which I would like to hire a really good uh, advisor... See, this genius costs 200 though. That's a little pricey. Let's go ahead and get this guy over here. And again, just stack up more of that army experience gain. It's so good. Ah, dang it. The anarchists fired off. All right. It's not the end of the world. It just makes the Republicans a little bit weaker. Um, at the same time, it also distracts the nationalists. So who know? I, I don't know. I just want to see Madrid hold out as long as possible. Keep this train a rolling. Somehow we've still managed to get more naval experience than we have army experience. Not too sure how that's happened. I know we've done some training, but, you know, a 60% chance instead of 40, I would have... There we go again. I would have expected to be more successful at delivering these goods. Oy, eh, whatever. Anyway, it's fine. Just keep boosting up that factory output. How are we... Oh, wait. I need to get some uh, steel. Ooh, should have done that sooner. How are we doing on our logistics? We still have 3,000 guns that we're producing. We're making 20 a day. So, I mean, we're almost, not quite, but almost producing enough guns that we can just keep clicking the button as long as the war goes on. Okay, at this point, the tensions are very high. It's hurting my stability, and boom. He's arrested. We no longer have to worry about a civil war. That's taken care of, and we're back up to 55 Stability. Um, all right. So we could now start going for things like this alliance, which hurts my stability a little bit. I don't think I can really justify this yet. I want to go down this route so I can beeline for the Unify Central America and start getting some annexation war goals. But I need to get that stability a little bit higher. And normally by now, we would have gotten another event that could have boosted stability a little bit higher and kept the church under control. But this, this could bring us down to an atheist state. And I really can't have that yet. So, all right, we are going to, um, 
We are going to probably go for... Ooh, do we want to go for control the army for base stability now or women's suffrage to boost the church up a little bit higher? I think we want to go for women's suffrage because as long as we get up to an assertive church, then when I pick up the Bolivarian Alliance, it's going to go from a strengthened church down to a weak church and not atheist state. And as long as we don't fall down to atheist state, we don't have to worry about getting the 60 stability in order to get our uh, avoid the civil war. So I think that's still the best way to go. I'm getting a little bit antsy about what's happening in Madrid, though. Um, they seem to have managed to encircle everything. How did they even get through this? What were you doing? Did they have a literal hole in their line? Oh, no. We might be about to have a very unlucky game, because my test runs, I've been able to get over 400 army experience uh, before the Republicans lost. Now it's... Oh, wait. Oh, now we're going to Assertive Church anyway. See? Anyway, um... Yeah, uh... I'm, I'm, I'm concerned that we are going to get kind of screwed here. I, I, I'm pretty sure we should have gotten a little bit more time. Oh, come on, Republican Spain, turn it around, or at the very least, have all your uh, troops stacked up on the last few victory points and hold out as long as you can, dang it. All right, women's suffrage is now gonna push us over to a powerful church. I wouldn't have done that had I known I was going to get that event that boosted up church power. This is where there's a bit of luck involved, because in some of my test games, you don't get those events, like the Archbishop dying or whatever the second one was, and you end up being in an atheist state by the time you click this button, and all of a sudden you're looking at potentially a civil war, and you have to spend some of your political power boosting up some stability before it happens. Nationalist Spain just finished off the Anarchists, which means everything is about to get sent down to Republican Spain. I'm getting closer to where I should be now, almost up to 500 of that army experience. We're getting closer. Let's go ahead and pick up the Military Theorists, just do that now. Obviously when I'm getting to about 500, we have to start spending it. Gosh dang it, so many stupid weapon shipments being lost, it's starting to really peeve me off. Come on, army experience, all of it! There's the Bolivarian Alliance. I have now officially created my own faction. Now, technically, to go for the Sunset uh, Invasion Achievement, you need to lead your own faction, or if you're a member of a faction, it has to be comprised of only members of Central and South America or puppet states. Now, to get around that, you just, like, cancel the faction. So, don't worry too much about the fact that we're in a faction, but it does mean if you're gonna continue keeping the Bolivarian Alliance, make sure it's only puppets or members of Central and South America so you can get the achievement. Let's go for the Coastal Defense Plan, and that will get me some annexation war goals once we can march southwards and then unify Central America. That is the Beeline Plan. We are moving for that as fast as we can. And by the way, let's go ahead and start revising some templates over here. For example, I would like to make this my typical uh, 21 with infantry and artillery division over here. So let's go ahead and mark that accordingly like so. I don't think we even have engineering companies as of yet, so we can't even really properly entrench. But I'd like to go ahead and at least have a handful of these ready to go. Um, mainly because jungles have a, uh, a combat width of 84. So 21 fits beautifully into those. And there's going to be quite a few jungles in South America that I will be fighting over. So I figure that's going to be nice. Gosh dang it. That's like five of those in a row. That's a sub 1% chance that I'm going to be getting that many stinking naval convoys sunk. Gosh dang it. Come on, work with me. Finally, some army experience. Ugh. All right. Well, anyway, we've got all the discounts we're going to get. We might as well go for superior firepower. 85 uh, army experience. Ba-boom, 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 and we're really close to getting to mechanized offensive. If they can hold out just a, a few more weeks, we can totally get there. Do you now see how powerful this is? Okay, we have the march southwards. Focus done. We could go for Unify Central America, but we don't need to until I've got... Um, Honduras, Guatemala, and so on. I guess we could go ahead and just pick this up now. The alternative would be to go something like control the army and... What? Depoliticize even further? Go for another cost reduction? Hmm. Could go down that route. I actually wouldn't mind also going for something like the National Bank. It's kind of time for us to start uh, improving our economy. Let's go ahead and work on that next. I'm still focusing on this. I know there's more we can do and start conquering people now, but... For real, we're so close to getting what I needed. Gosh dang it with the naval experience. And there it is. Shock and awe time. Extra soft attack across the board. Boom, that's gonna make conquering Central and South America 
So very easy. All right, if you guys want to collapse now, you can. I mean, if you want to hold out, like I'm not opposed, but there you go. So with this Hispanic solidarity, what you would normally do is try to invite all these people into your faction, but like, why bother when I can just conquer them? That seems so much objectively better. So let's take a look at Guatemala. Now you'll notice that they are guaranteed by the US. But so am I, and there's this weird thing in the game where if you're guaranteed by the US and you attack someone else they're guaranteeing, they don't seem to care. So, I don't care either. Let's just declare this little war over them, y'all, and see if we can just march right in, grab Guatemala, and say, hey oh, we're taking over now. There's our national bank taken care of. Okay, so we could go for some consumer goods reduction with an advisor. Oh, uh, we could go down this route. I'm not really sure which one of these is better, if I'm honest. I don't really care about the party of the revolution, but I do kind of feel like maybe some of this is a little bit better. Eh, we'll come back to some of that. Oh, here we go. Institutional revolution. This will be nice. Really start boosting up the stability and the democracy. Plus, we get a new leader, which is going to be good. And yeah, everything here is just great. All right, let's go ahead and pick up institutional revolution. It's time to officially become democratic. Just, you know, the aggressive crusading version of democratic. Bye, Guatemala. You're mine now. I am continuing to train up more units, by the way. We're producing guns fast enough that I can afford to do this and keep supporting the Spanish left. Because for some reason, Republican Spain refuses to die. I'm so impressed by all this. Uh, let's see, let's go ahead and attack. Actually, yeah, let's go ahead and attack Honduras first, probably, because I think that uh, El Salvador is gonna be a little bit difficult to fight just from this direction. This should be a little bit easier. If we can just punch through with this many troops, plus the air superiority that I've already got, we can grab this, then I can attack these guys from several directions and take out San Salvador with no problem. Okay, marching right into Honduras. That is done, thank you. That's another set of states for me. Let's go ahead and get all the troops into position around San Salvador, who again does have a kind of surprising number of troops, but that's gonna be fine. Get themselves in position. We'll try to get ourselves a small planning bonus if possible, and then we move on to the next war. And we're just gonna continue doing this now until I have conquered pretty much everything I've got claims on. And when I run out of claims, guess what we do? We get more claims and do it all again. A little bit of extra artillery power is done. That helps a little. Something I know I'm gonna need to do is get myself some uh, transport ships because we are gonna be doing some naval invasions hopping around to, let's say, Panama or all over the Caribbean. So I have to make sure that I get that tech. It's very embarrassing when you forget. Here we go, almost got it, forcing them back, exhausting, and boom, there goes El Salvador, thank you. All right, I think that's all the claims I've got at the moment, yes. So we're trying to get this revolution done. Next thing we need to do is, of course, unify Centro America. This does give me a little bit of time to go ahead and start unifying my templates. Uh, we don't have enough artillery, but honestly, we should be able to make up for that eventually anyway, so... I'm gonna go ahead and say that's okay. As we get more factories, yeah, we'll go ahead and toss some of these into Toad Artillery, why not? Is Republican Spain seriously still alive? Oh my God, they really are refusing to die. Between Toledo and Madrid, they're still freaking going. Wow, okay, I, I, I've actually managed to get all the way down here to Ford Observers. We've almost completely finished this dang thing by March of 1938, holy crud. All right, well, we are officially now properly a democratic state, am I right? Um, let's see, yep, we are the United Mexican States. Beautiful, so my leader is now gonna be a little bit better for us. We got some stability plus that trade deal opinion. All that's looking great. Okay, and 78% stability, you know what that means. We're gonna be able to start propping up the church if we want to. Unify Centro America. Let's start integrating the South. So as we conquer all these states, now we're gonna have the option to start integrating them properly and turning every, cord st uh, every state that I conquer into a cord state. That means more factories, more manpower, just generally a stronger, happier, more powerful nation. All right, Nicaragua, your turn. Well, that didn't take long at all. All right, that's a little bit more for me. Uh, let's get down over here to who's next. Costa Rica, and there's, uh, of course, Panama. You can see that this is about the point where we need to be having those transport ships. So I've timed this out a little bit late. We do still need to get these suckers up and running before I can really take out Panama because, like, I can't march through the U.S. Not yet, anyway. That would be uh, what we call suicide, and I'm not feeling suicidal. Thank you. Hey, a whole bunch of extra recovery rate and stuff for, like, infantry and cars and stuff. 
I don't know, whatever, I've got advanced fire bases. I'm one away, one away, and they're still alive! Dude, you can't even make this up. Holy crud, they're still holding on. They just lost Toledo. Is that the end of it? I think that, oh wait, nope, that's Costa Rica. <laughs> hang on, hang on, hang on, pass, 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 take all states, and Dunskis, thank you. They're still alive, oh my god, they're still going. Send them the guns, they can make it, I believe in you! <laughs> it's literally coming down to just Madrid. Oh my god, one more, we're really close. We're about to get it. Holy crud, we're gonna finish the entire Doctrine Tree! Ah, oh, dang it, there they go. So close, two experience off, and we would have gotten all of it before the Spanish Civil War even ended, wow. I'm not even mad, I am amazed that they lasted that long. That's just downright incredible, and we are gonna finish it off, no problem at all. All right, I think that's a really good place for us to end this video. So I'm now just waiting on transport ships, at which point we are then gonna be able to go land over here, snag Panama, with Panama gone, of course, we'll go ahead and start integrating everything. It takes like only 25 political power each to integrate, so it's not even that hard. And then we're going to start taking out Colombia, Ecuador, and Venezuela. We can do all of that. No problem whatsoever. Thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed and you're looking forward to this, hopefully, pretty short series. If so, I would ask you to hit that like button, leave a comment, subscribe, hit the notify bell, and I will see you guys next time.